Now, before we get to your calls, I'll read some of your messages as well that you've been kind enough to send us. Uh, we're going to talk about uh, some old people down in Broadstairs in Kent. Uh, they like to meet on what they call a kind of well-being hub. It was created by uh, one of the residents, a collection of bungalows around some uh, sort of free grass area. Uh, uh, it's, it's basically it's four wooden chairs with some side tables and a picnic bench. There we are. There we are. That's what it is. Uh, one of the residents, and there they are, all enjoying each other's company. And many of them are old and lonely, so this is nice for them. It was created by uh, one of the residents, 60-year-old Lyndon Brand. He moved to the area two years ago. Well, they've now been told that they can't sit on these seats and these benches uh, because they're dangerous. Uh, this uh, uh, diktat, this deranged diktat, uh, has come down uh, from their housing association, the housing association that owns the bungalows in which they live. Uh, it's just mad, isn't it? It's just mad. Well, uh, I mentioned Lyndon Brand. Uh, let's talk to him. Uh, Lyndon is on the line now. Uh, welcome to the show, Lyndon. Yeah, good evening, Kevin. Thanks for having me on. Uh, well, I th you created this area, you call it a well-being hub, if you like, uh, a few chairs, a bench, a picnic table, where you and your neighbours, on a nice day, I know we don't have too many of them, but, you know, you like to get together, have a chat, and as you, as I just said, I think that the bungalows that surround uh, your well-being hub, uh, there's lots of old people there who are lonely, this is a great thing. And now the housing association that owns your homes has told you you're not allowed to sit on these uh, seats and benches because they're dangerous. In what way, uh, Lyndon, are they dangerous, do you think? Uh, they're saying that they're a trip hazard. What does that mean? Now, can, now no, if I can set the scene for you, yeah. you've got a bungalow, you've got a backyard, and you've got a front grass lawn either side of your footpath to your front door. Uh, one side has got, like, a picnic bench, and the other side has got these these chairs which are they're purpose built for garden chairs you can go and buy them it's about 200 pound each right so, uh, but they're saying that where they're situated the grass englishman the home is his castle although i might think that it's my lawn which i care for and feed and mow um that it's actually not mine it's to be shared with every other bungalow even though they've got their own grass frontage themselves. But in so a way, in a way, Lyndon, though, I'm looking at the picture now, I mean, everybody yeah. is sharing it because you're all sitting around on the area of grass outside your house. I mean, but, and in what way, a trip hazard? What, what do they mean by that? I don't know. Who could trip over something as big as that? I'm, I mean, they're saying it because in, in our... Um, um, tenancy agreement, it doesn't say that you can't have furniture on the grass, um, but they're saying that it comes under a different clause, which is something like keep the area clean. And I think that was designed for people when they maybe get a new refrigerator and they put the old one outside for a few days till the council comes to pick it up. I think that's what that rule is for, but that surely doesn't cover what I'm doing. Yeah, I mean... It... You know, I'm going to, I'll have to read out fairly soon the statement that, that your housing association uh, is called Orbit Housing and they've issued a statement to explain this decision and I will read it out in a minute. Uh, it's a bit long but I better do it uh, for fairness and balance. But frankly, it's just jobs worthery, isn't it? This is jobs worth busybody nonsense. Oh, I very much think so, yeah. I've, I've, um, I think I've got under their nose a little bit before... <laughs> Um, and maybe it's a bit vengeful. I don't know. What well, it's human nature, right? Um, big, big concerns don't like to be told they're possibly wrong yeah. by minions like myself, maybe. Uh, in, indeed. How, how long have you lived there? In a couple of years, isn't it? Uh, yeah, just over two years. That, that we set. I set. I started setting this up about eighteen months, nearly two years ago. Yeah, and, and, and it literally started with one bench. Yeah, I don't know if you live on your own, but as I understand it, a lot of your neighbours they're elderly, uh, they're on their own, kind of lonely. Oh. This is a chance to get together, right? Well, that's exactly what's happened. 
Yeah, well, 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 if I could just explain to you briefly. Please. When I first moved in, I wanted to meet all my new neighbours, so I knocked on every door that was local to me um, and started talking to people. Uh, and in the process, I've asked who lives over there, who lives over there. They didn't really know. It's like, is that English? I don't know. You open your door, you might nod to your neighbour across the way and close the door. You never get to know them. Yeah. So I, um, I spent some time living in America, and they're not like that over there. Everybody's helpful and, and, and nice to you. So I decided to bring that to uh, England. And now everybody kind of knows each other that wants to, because there's often, obviously there's... There's always people in a neighbourhood that don't want to know some other people. But the ones that do, now we all congregate. And a chair was donated to me. I bought two. Um, one of the other chairs was donated to me because it kept getting bigger. It started with two chairs. Yeah. And there was always somebody that had to stand or be on one of those <laughs> rickety, yeah. rickety little um, um, fold-up chairs, which is no good for elderly people. Yeah. They can't. They can't sit in them and then expect them to get out without it tipping over. Yeah. So that's when I went out and purchased a, a, another matching bench with two chairs and a little table in the middle, all solid. Yeah, 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 uh, yeah. And then it ex expanded from there. More people came over, so it was like, oh, we need more chairs. That's what's happened. Uh, this is amazing as well. You know, you've created, you know, the, it was a community waiting to happen and you made yeah. it happen, and then you get these jobs worse, these busybodies step in and ruin it. I, I just don't get it, do you? I absolutely don't get it. That's, you know, that's the reason we kind of like, well, I'm speaking to you. Um, whether or not your input may help it along or may get me evicted, I don't know. <laughs> oh, I hope not, I hope not, I hope not. Uh, I hope not. Uh, so, so are the chairs still there? I mean, or have you yes. had to... They're still there. No, no, they're, yeah, they're still there. We, um, yeah, the, the, the story you picked up on, I think, was from Kent Media. Uh, um, well, it, I, I saw it in the Sun, actually, but uh, yeah, prob oh, prob probably, right. yeah. Oh, cool, okay. Um, but um, they, after after the interview that the 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 the, uh, the, the news the, the newspaper sent round, um, they said uh, you probably won't hear anything, and within an hour we had a phone call. From the very gentleman who'd sent that letter out. That yeah, you just read. well, they now saying they're still saying you can't sit on them or what? Well, he tried to make his point, and then we kind of, you know, we was all actually sitting there. It was at that time that picture you showed. Yeah, we were sitting there, so there was input from everybody around. Um, and at the end of it, he actually started to say, "Well, until we've had a proper meeting about it, um, oh. where we can get all the residents into a church hall, uh, we'll allow you to leave it there for the time being." But the threat was that from Monday the 14th, they was going to come around on, on one of the, the Monday the 14th onwards yeah. and just, you know, collect it up, put it in a, a lorry, take it away and break it up. It's just, it's just ridiculous. Well, listen... We uh, the thought was left anyway, but, you know... Yeah, they, I don't think they could do that. So, um, uh, so uh, since this, uh, have you any of you dared to gather on these controversial seats? Oh, yes, we've had two or three bright, <laughs> sunny days. Yeah, absolutely. So you're still, really. you're just, uh, you're quite rightly ignoring the jobs worse. Good, good. Uh, listen, totally. uh, Lyndon, I, I, I'm going to let you go now because I'm going to have to read out this statement from uh, Orbit Housing. Uh, but, uh, yeah, but, I'd like to hear it, yeah. But we'll, we'll, we'll keep in touch and all the best with it. I think people like you are the kind of people that make neighbourhoods worth living in and uh, I think it's really, really uh, depressing uh, that officials oh. get involved. You know what I mean? Uh, so, listen, we'll keep in touch and uh, let's hope we have a ser sensible outcome for this. And you can stay tuned if you like because I'm going to have to read out this statement. Um, so, uh, big thank you to Lyndon Brand, a resident uh, down there in uh, Broadstairs. This is at Orbit Housing, uh, the landlords, if you like, of uh, Lyndon and his neighbours. Uh, they said in a statement, bear with me, I better read it all. Uh, we want everyone to be able to enjoy their community and make it their own 
in a safe, respectful and inclusive way. As a social housing landlord, we have a duty of care to keep outdoor communal areas well managed and clear of any hazards that could present health and safety or fire risks or prevent all residents from enjoying the area. We have therefore reached out to all customers on the estate to kindly ask them to remove items in these areas, including lighting, flagpoles and restrictive borders that pose hazards and prevent all residents from enjoying the space. We understand the well-being benefits that an outdoor social space can offer, which is why we offered in our letter to arrange a meeting with all customers living on the estate to support them in creating an inclusive community space for the benefit of all in a suitable and safe location. We encourage customers to accept our invitation so we can design an area that better suits the needs of the whole estate. Uh, in the meantime, we have agreed for the benches to remain until a new location can be agreed. Uh, we would also like to take this opportunity to, remi to remind all Orbit customers that they can access free well-being support if needed through our Better Days programme, which can provide them with expert advice and resources across a wide range of support services and via external partners, including mental health support. Uh, well, you know, OK, that's their statement. I, I say to Orbit Housing, uh, by all means, get in touch. Uh, let them keep their seats. You know, it doesn't matter, does it? You know, what harm are they doing? Uh, what do you think?